Hey everyone, it's Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to be making a card with a mono print that is very similar to this one. You might recognize it if you watch my mono print Mondays. Every Monday I do a YouTube short and it's about making mono prints with different techniques and mediums. So I actually added that short to this video. So after this little intro is done, you'll get to take a peek at that short. It's only a minute long and then we'll jump into making the actual card. So if you're like me and you do a lot of mono printing, then you probably have a pretty big stack of prints. I have a ton and this is a great way to use them quickly, get a really cool looking card out of it. And you can use these techniques on other things too, like art journals and tags and things like that. And if you don't mono print, I hope you'll stick around anyway because you can use pattern paper in the same way that you're using these mono prints because really that's what we've got here. We've got patterned paper. So feel free to hang out anyway and learn some fun ways to use your pattern paper. I do a little troubleshooting with this card, nothing crazy, but it comes out really nice in the end and I hope you enjoy it. And if you haven't seen any of my mono print Mondays, take a look in the shorts tab on my YouTube channel and you'll get to see over a year's worth of mono printing. So I appreciate you being here. Let's jump into the card. So now that you've seen how this gel press was made, let's turn it into a card. So I'm going to start off by trimming this down. I, I have an idea of what I plan on doing, but I want to show you how I get my gel press prints ready for whatever project I'm going to make, whether it's card making or scrapbooking or making tags, etc. So the first thing is that I want to get rid of all of this excess white space. It helps you focus in on the actual print itself and you can kind of trim away pieces that you may or may not really be in favor of. So I tend to use this rotary cutter as opposed to some of my other trimmers that I have simply because the cutting line is right at the edge of this plastic piece here. So I can easily just butt it up against that piece and I don't have to worry about aligning it at the top if I have it aligned here because a lot of times I don't print them perfectly straight. So I just line that up and then I can cut away the excess and I still have a nice straight line but I'm getting rid of all of that white nice and easily. So again I'm just butting it up and once you have that first cut made you can just put it against your guides whether they're at the top or the bottom but for the sake of the video and the fact that you can't really see my whole trimmer I'm just gonna do it this way so I'm just gonna do the last two sides making sure it's pretty straight and then we'll do the last side Okay, now we're going to get this out of the way. Now we have to figure out where we want our card front to be. So you may have seen me use this before. This is just a piece of cardboard and the interior is cut to four by five and a quarter because that's the size that I like to use for my card fronts or my card panels that decorate the card bases. Um, I tend to make standard A2 size cards. So having the panels that are the focus um, at four by five and a quarter leaves me a nice border around the edge that I can add color or splatter or things like that. So this is like my little lens. I can decide like, do I want to cut this part out? Do I want to do it this way? 
Granted, this is a little smaller, but you know, I can decide if I want to isolate this side or this side. But what I think I'd like to do is this piece here. I want to make sure I get all of my colors. So I think I'm going to keep this edge and then just trim away this excess. So to do that, I'm going to just take a pencil and just make a pencil mark there, cut that edge off, and then I can figure out the rest of my dimensions from there. Now I've got a smaller trimmer. You can use the same one, you know, that you used to cut this piece down before, but for the sake of being on camera, this guy is smaller. So I'm going to just line it up with my pencil line. You can see this metal edge. This is where the cut is, and this is where I've got it lined up. And I'm going to just trim that away. And then I'm going to go down to, I'm going to spin it around and go to five and a quarter. Fix that just a little bit. I've got to just trim this. I didn't make it perfectly straight before. That's okay. There we go. And now I'm going to just cut this at four. And now we have our panel. And we have these great strips. Don't get rid of these strips. You can use them on other projects. You can cut them out. You can tear them up. You can layer them together. They're great for tags. They're great for collages, things like that. But these are too nice to get rid of. And what I tend to do is I just have a bag of them by my desk of all different strips. Sometimes I use them together. Sometimes I don't. But it's nice to have them in one convenient area. Okay, so now that that's all trimmed up, you can see that this has a nice border around the edge and it allows us to add color or leave it white, whatever. I tend to add color, but you can do whatever you prefer. So I have a stamp and die set from Honey Bee Stamps. This is the Enjoy. I don't believe that this is available anymore. Use what you've got. You've probably got some nice big word stamps or word dies that you can use. Um, we're going to use this die and I haven't decided which shadow we're going to use yet. I might keep it small so that we don't hide too much of our really cool background, but we're going to start off by die cutting this out of black cardstock and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to take this, trim this down with my scissors. This is just black cardstock and I'll run this through my die cut machine and we'll see which shadow layer we're going to use with it. Okay, we've got that all cut out. I'm going to leave the dot of the eye over to the side so that I don't lose it. And I'm really liking how this looks already. So now it's just a matter of deciding, do we want a fancy die to shadow our word, or do we want it to be a little bit more subdued? It's kind of big, and I, I really don't want to hide this center section. Let me show you the difference in size here. This one's going to cut much closer to that die. So I think that we're going to go with that. We can always change our minds at the end, right? So now we need to just determine the color. And honestly, I don't think that you can go wrong with holographic. I mean, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? So we're going to cut this out next and then layer these together and make sure that we're happy with this arrangement and then start putting all of our layers together. All right, check this out. I think that looks really great. Super happy. Okay, so we're going to layer this up and then determine what we're going to do with the edge because I am not going to leave it white. That's just not my typical style. Um, I like to add color. It's just another opportunity to kind of play with... Uh, coordinating or contrasting colors. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm just adding some Barely Arts glue to my die cut. I want to be careful you don't put too much because you don't want it to squish out. It will show a bit um, on the holographic cardstock if you're not careful. So we don't want to have too much, too much on there. Oops. Okay. A little bit kind of coming out already. Okay. 
lay that down. Okay. And then we have to just add the dot. Did I say the dot of the I before? I did. I said the dot of the I. It's the dot of the J. I'm only just realizing I said that now. All right. That looks good. Very cute. Nice and shiny. I think that I want to go with yellow because the yellow is what's in the middle. I think that that's going to look really nice around the edge. So I'm going to grab some yellow ink and we'll ink the edge. I have the pocket full of sunshine uh, ink cube set from Altenew and I love these yellows very much. So I decided I was going to go with either maple yellow or fresh lemon. Either one will work really well, but I think we're going to go with the fresh lemon. I think that that'll be nice. So I have that here and we're just going to ink the edge of this really quickly. And if it turns out that, you know, you ink the edges of something or you splatter the edges of a card or whatever and you don't like it, you can just use it another time, maybe add some colors on top of it, depending on the translucency, because obviously if I were to put green on top of, uh, blue, excuse me, on top of this, then we'd get green. Um, but don't throw it away. Just hang on to it and decide which color you'd like to do instead. See, now this is, is popping a little too brightly for me right now. I think that it's a little overpowering. So what are we going to do to fix that? I think that I'm going to go in with some blue, actually, and we'll get a little bit of green going. And I think that that's going to look really nice. Instead of a true blue, we're going to go with Peacock Feathers Distress Ink because this is um, going to match really nicely with this. And even if we get green, that's okay. But I think that this is going to sort of chill that yellow out a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting, and it's going to look a little bit better. So you just kind of work through these problems. Not that it's a problem, um, just kind of shift gears a little bit. See, I like that much better. I think that that's nicer. All right, cool. So we're going to do that. We're going to glue this down, and then we're going to add our sub-sentiment um, I think that we're going to do your day. So we have enjoy your day. So I'm going to get this glued up and then we'll finish the card. Okay, the main panel has been glued. I left this off for the moment just so that we can determine what we're going to do with it once we have our sub sentiment stamped out. I have my stamps here and a piece of black cardstock. And we are going to quickly just get this on the cardstock and heat emboss it with some white, trim it down, and then add it to our card. So I'm just applying this to an acrylic block. You can use a stamp positioning tool if you prefer, whatever you're comfortable with. Looks pretty good. And I have my anti-static powder tool to just make sure that um, we don't get embossing powder where we don't want it. So now I have some Versamark ink ink this up with that. It, this is a sticky ink so that our powder, that side is a little crooked. Let's do this side. So that our powder, uh, embossing powder will only stick where we want it, which would be the words. Okay, so that's nice and crisp. And now I'm going to grab some white embossing powder. This is just a detail white. Sprinkle this on, tap off the excess, and you could see that it really didn't stick anywhere but that, the letters, except for a couple of little tiny spots here that we can just sweep away with a brush, and then we're good to go. So I'm gonna get my embossing tool, get rid of this powder, and then we'll heat emboss. So you're gonna hear a little bit of noise. That's just my embossing gun. I'm letting it get nice and warm. And I'm going to bring this over, and we will keep this up.
and you can see it change. It brightens and gets shiny. And now we have your day. Now we're going to cut this down. We're going to use our trimmer again. Just kind of eyeball it. And then we'll have to cut off the excess here. There's a little bit more on top now than there is on the bottom, so I'm going to want to trim that down as well. It's going to be a little trickier to do, but we can do it. Okay, better. And then we're just going to trim that area there. I think that looks good there. We could also have it down low, but I don't want to have all of this green hidden because I like it, especially now that we have the edge the way we do. So I think I like it better more in the center and it's not going to be centered because we want to have room for our sub sentiment. Put that there for keeping it in place. And now we'll just glue this all down. So when you have a busy background, like this gel press print, busy doesn't mean bad, by the way. It just means that there's a lot going on. There's a lot to look at, right? There's many colors. There's many, I shouldn't say many textures, but there's a cool texture happening. Um, you know, you don't need to do a whole lot if you're happy with how it looks. You can just add a quick die cut or stamped sentiment and then call it a day. If you want to, you know, go ahead and add some type of sequins or rhinestones or something, you can, but you can also just keep it nice and flat like this and just come out with a really cool looking card. So there you go. That is one quick way to use a mono print that you've made on your gel press plate um, and that you want to really highlight that print, which is what I wanted to do here. That's it for me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will be back very soon with another video. Be well, stay safe, peace out.